everyone, Sarah with the Hobby Lobby Creative Studio here. Stay tuned to find out why pillowcases aren't just for pillows anymore. We're cooking up a sweet project idea for you right after this. You know, something that we love to do at Hobby Lobby is to think outside of the box. Or I guess in this case it would be outside of the pillow? But anyway, would you believe it if I told you that this entire vintage inspired apron was made from pillowcases? It's true, and all the supplies that you need are available on our supply list, and you can find all of your supplies at your local Hobby Lobby or on the website. Here's how we made our apron. First, visit the needle arts department in Hobby Lobby and pick up a few different designs of pillowcase packets. They come like this, and you can see that there are pictures of the designs that you're getting inside of the package. And go ahead and pick up three to five different designs. We actually have five different layers on our aprons, and we wanted a different design on each layer. So we picked up five different packets, but if you want to kind of tweak this and make it your own, you can maybe just do three layers with three different designs if you want to make a little bit shorter of an apron. So these pillowcases are really great because they actually come with the pre-printed design on them already in this nice blue color, so it's really easy to see. So then all you need to do after that is go pick up your favorite colors of embroidery floss. We really like the Artiste brand that's 100% Egyptian cotton. That's a really great quality of floss to use for this particular project. So pick out your favorite colors, figure out what colors you want to use where on your pillowcase, and then grab the stitch guide that comes in the packet with the pillowcase. And this will tell you everything you need to know about what stitches to make where on your pillowcase. So follow that guide and you'll be golden. After you have all of your embroidery work done, go ahead and toss all your layers into the washing machine on a very gentle cycle if you have it. And this will start to kind of wash out your blue pre-printed design, but it'll take a few washes for it to wash out completely. It'll also help pre-shrink your pillowcases before you do any of your cutting. So after you've taken them out of the washing machine, you're going to start making your cuts. So you're going to just lay out your pillowcase flat. And what you're going to do is actually cut across so that you're only cutting the embroidered section out of your pillowcase. You can kind of do it as tall or as wide as you want. It's really up to you. When you make your cuts, just make sure you cut through the front and the back of the pillowcase because you'll actually use the back of this pillowcase as well. What you do with it is after you have your embroidered piece on the front cut out, you're going to cut the back half of the pillowcase in half and place it on either side of your embroidered piece. So you'll have your embroidered piece and then an even section on the left side and an even section on the right side of what came from the back of your pillowcase. Now to join those two pieces on either side, you're just going to use a fourth of an inch basic stitch and you might use some pinking shears after that to kind of prevent fraying on those edges. So after you have those sewed together on either side of your embroidered section, go ahead and cut even sections off of those side pieces just so that your entire layer is about 36 inches long, give or take. So after you've made those cuts, then you're going to finish the edges completely. So at this point, you should have some layers that look something like this. We have all five of our layers here. And we have our side pieces joined together. And now we want to finish the edges just to give our apron a nice clean look. So on some of these layers, they already come a little bit wavy at the bottom, and those are actually already a finished edge. So you don't need to do anything to those edges. But on other ones, for example on this one, you're actually going to finish all of the edges on it. So at this point, if you have a serger, that's probably one of the best ways to finish your edges. Or you can use a zigzag stitch on a regular sewing machine, and that actually gives you the same result as a serger. It's just that you can do it on a normal sewing machine if you don't have a serger. We've chosen to do it just a really easy way, which is just to cut it with pinking shears first and then just fold it over about a fourth of an inch and make your seam that way. Because those pinking shears will help to prevent fraying, and then it's just a real basic easy seam after that. 
So after you have all your edges finished, however you want to do it, next you're going to make a backer piece for all of your layers to be sewn onto. To make your backer piece, you're going to use the extra fabric that you have left over from cutting out your embroidered section earlier. So you should have just made your cut about right here just to cut out your embroidered piece. So really you have all this extra fabric left over. So with that extra fabric, what you want to do is actually cut up the side of it and across the top of it and fold it out so that you have a larger area to draw a backer pattern onto. So what you'll end up with is something that looks like this. This is our backer piece. So you can see it's kind of a pyramid shape. And if you want some exact measurements to reference to, our backer is actually 28 inches across the bottom and then 17 and a half inches up from the bottom, we drew another 19 inch line across the top that just connect the two lines. So you'll end up with something that looks like this. What you're going to do is just do a basic seam across both of the slanted sides on either side and just leave your bottom and your top raw. We just did the typical pinking shear with folding it over just a fourth of an inch to finish it. But you can finish the edges however you want to. I would suggest finishing them the exact same way that you did before on your layers. After you have your backer piece, you're going to lay it out flat. And now you want to figure out what layers are going to go where, what order you want to put them in, and where they're going to fall on your backer. I'll show you how we chose to do it. So we have five layers on our apron, and we put our fifth layer lined up with the very bottom edge of our backer. And then we just started stacking up layers on top of that. So then we have layer four of our apron on top of it, and they just slightly overlap. So right now, you're not doing anything real official, you're just kind of getting a gauge of how you want to arrange your layers and how you really want your apron to look. So just keep spacing them out until you get to the very top and you want your very top edges to line up exactly. So once you place your top layer on, you might have to adjust all your other layers so that they're spaced out however you want to space them out. Okay, so at this point, what you want to do is maybe just put a little straight pin and kind of mark where you've placed that layer on your backer and use it as a reference because we're going to finish prepping each of our layers a little bit now. You can see on our lovely apron here that we've actually added some really pretty trim to each layer. We have some nice um, iridescent trim here, and on this layer we have some lace with some rickrack and some other green trim. And then on the pillowcases that actually already come with the finished edge that's a little bit wavy, we've just taken some of our complementary colored embroidery floss and just did a nice overcast stitch along the edge to give it that really cool wrapped look. So just mosey on over to the fabric section and pick out some of your favorite trims, whatever tickles are fancy to use on your own apron, and just make it your own and add the trim at that point. And then you're going to actually sew a couple of basting stitches on each of your layers. And we've chosen to do ours at a fourth of an inch and half of an inch down from the edge. And then you're going to attach each layer right in between the two. So really you're just kind of using two basting stitches as a gauge to attach your layers to your apron. So now that you have all your prep work done, you have your basting stitches sewn on and you've got your trim added, go ahead and place your layers back on your backer, wherever you've marked it with a pin. And now you want to just gently tug on your basting stitches so that the width of that layer matches the width of the backer for that specific spot that the layer hits the backer. So tug on each layer on your basting stitches until your widths are nice and lined up. And after you finish attaching all your layers to your backer, you're going to end up with something that looks like this. So your apron should be looking a little bit like this so far. We don't have a waistband or anything added yet. We just have our layers and our trim and everything sewn on. And it's looking really good. It has that great overlapped look. It's really looking very cute. So you're actually almost done at this point. So now we want to work on the waistband and the ties. 
Next, you're going to make the waistband and the ties for your apron. The waistband and ties are actually three separate pieces that you're going to work on and put together. So go ahead and go to the fabric section, pick out some of your favorite fabric. We've just chosen to use this hot pink gingham fabric that's very cute, but just pick out whichever one you want for your own apron and then start to make your cuts. So for each of your ties, you're going to cut two pieces that are each 30 inches long by six inches deep. And then for your waistband, you're going to have a piece that's 20 inches long by four inches deep. So let's work on our ties first. For each tie, you're going to just do that basic fourth of an inch seam on both of these long sides first, as well as the end. And you can just use whatever finishing method you used earlier. If you want to use your serger, if you want to do a double hem or do a zigzag stitch, you can do that at this point. It's really up to you. So we've also done on one end, this nice point. So all you need to do to do that is just fold down one of your corners so that it meets the opposite edge and it'll give you this great finished pointed look for your tie. At the opposite end on your other shorter end, you're going to sew a basic basting stitch so that you can lightly gather that in so that it matches the same width as your waistband whenever you're ready to attach the tie to your waistband. So after you've finished doing both ties, we're going to work on the actual waistband. So with your 20 inch by four inch piece, you're going to actually lay it out flat. And next you're gonna need some fusible interfacing. You can also pick this up in the fabric section. Cut out your interfacing so that it's the same size as the fabric for the waistband. And why we're even using interfacing is because it's a little bit stiffer than the actual fabric and it's going to give your waistband a nice structured look. So when you place it on there, this interfacing is fusible so that when you apply a little bit of heat to it, it actually starts to stick to the fabric that it's on top of. So take an iron and just give this a nice press across your fabric so that it just starts to stick. And then you're going to fold your fabric long ways and start to press this middle area again. And just do this middle section because we still have to attach our ties to either side. So once we have a nice crease, now we can attach our ties. So again, on the end that our basting stitch is sewn onto, just lightly gather your fabric using that basting stitch, tugging on the bottom thread, and then just match the width of your tie to the waistband, and kind of tuck it in there like that. Use some straight pins to pin it into place. Repeat that on the opposite side of the waistband. Tuck it in there, tug on your basting stitches so that everything is nice and even, pin it into place, and sew your ties to your waistband. So at that point, you should have a completed waistband and tie to attach to the top of your apron here. Voila, you've cooked up a beautiful looking apron out of some unexpected ingredients. To view more information about this project, visit our website at www.hobbylobby.com Click on the Project Inspiration tab and look for the project sheet called Getting Stitchy. You'll be able to view some additional pictures and information about this project and check out some other inspirational projects as well while you're there. Well, thanks for stopping by, everybody. I had a great time showing you how to make this apron today. I can't wait to see what you come up with with your own apron. Bye, everybody.